Welcome to Is the Earth Round or Flat? Episode 4, The Coriolis Effect. In Episode 1, we looked at physical distances, and how the flat Earth model creates an impossible triangle, where the greatest distance is not represented by the greatest line. Episode 2 had us gazing at the stars, or at least half of them, by exploring how northern and southern constellations, being visible depending on whether or not you're in the northern or southern hemisphere, strongly suggests a globe Earth, since a flat Earth shouldn't have this problem. Episode 3 saw us exploring the Moon, and how we can only ever seem to see a single face of the Moon, something that wouldn't be expected on a flat Earth, but would be expected on a round one in synchronous orbit with Earth. In this episode, we'll be looking at the Coriolis effect, and how patterns in wind direction counter some serious claims made by the flat Earth community. Straight off the bat, the Coriolis effect is whenever an object, not firmly connected to the ground, is travelling along a straight path, but appears to travel along a curved trajectory due to the platform being round and in motion. Here we can see side by side how the intended path on the left is straight, though the perceived path on the right is curved. There are many ways to illustrate the Coriolis effect, though one demonstration from National Geographic illustrates this concept practically and creatively using a merry-go-round. I'll link it in the description below. Before confronting the flat Earth model, we need to understand two key concepts that differentiate between a globe Earth and a flat Earth model, and those two concepts have to do with gravity and rotation. Okay, let's go. When a ball is dropped from a height, the traditional understanding of gravity, according to a globe Earth model, is that a pull from the center of the Earth is what drags the ball to the floor. In the flat Earth model, however, when a ball is dropped from a height, they don't look to gravity as an explanation, since they don't recognize the concept of gravity as having an active effect on the Earth. So why do balls fall straight down when dropped from a height, according to the flat Earth model? According to flat Earth theory, Whenever a ball is dropped from a height, the ball is not falling down to Earth. Instead, the Earth, being a flat disk, rises upward at a constant speed to meet the ball. And that, according to the flat Earth model, is why a ball, when dropped, will hit the ground. In other words, the flat Earth model suggests that objects fall not from a pull from below, but from a push from above. Additionally, the Earth doesn't spin in a flat Earth model whereas a globe Earth model rotates once every 24 hours. Together, these two differences provide useful groundwork in understanding how the Coriolis effect on wind patterns can be used to prove the Earth is round and spins, and is not in fact a flat, stagnant planet with a constant upward trajectory. Let's start with prevailing winds. Prevailing winds refer to giant belts of air that typically always blow in a single direction. For example, Trade winds, which are the air belts above and below the equator, will blow east to west throughout the year. Hence, they're considered prevailing winds. There are six main prevailing winds, and understanding why they blow in the direction they do will hopefully lead us to a conclusion that the Earth is a globe and rotates along its axis. Ready? Let's get started. First, we need to understand a few key concepts about air pressure. That hot air rises because it's lighter, and cold air sinks because it's heavier. Rising air will create low pressure. Sinking air will create high pressure. High pressure wants to move towards low pressure. Second, the Earth is heated unevenly. The areas closest to the Sun will be warmer than areas further away. The Sun will heat the surface of the equator very efficiently since it's close to the Sun, leading to rising hot air. This rising air pressure creates low pressure skies, attracting the sinking cold air from high pressure skies 30 degrees north and south. Third, whenever a ball is rotating along its axis, the middle section, or equator, will spin faster than the top and bottom, since it has a greater distance to move in the same span of time, which it achieves by increasing speed. Imagine a tank and this tank is about to ride along a small loop along this path. There are two tracks, the outside track and the inside track. In order for this tank to complete this loop, it will need to have one track moving faster than the other. In this case, the outside track will need to move faster 
because the outside of the loop is a greater distance than the inside of the loop. So the outside track needed to cover more distance or spin faster to achieve a smooth loop. And done. We've learned that hot air rises, cold air sinks. High pressure wants to move to low pressure. Earth is heated unevenly, with low pressure along the equator and high pressure 30 degrees north and south. The equator rotates faster than areas 30 degrees north and south due to a greater distance at the equator. Now, you're probably wondering how we can use these three concepts to prove the Earth is a globe and rotates. We know that high pressure seeks out low pressure. Think of inflating a balloon with a pump. High pressure in the pump, low pressure in the balloon. The air in the high pressure system will seek out the low pressure system. Now, the equator is low pressure with fast moving hot air. 30 degrees north and south is high pressure with slower cold air. This means that hot air from 30 degrees north and south is traveling along the trade winds towards the equator since high pressure seeks out low pressure. If the Earth did not spin, what should the Earth's trajectory be from point A to point B? Well, a straight line, of course. Assuming the Earth to be a globe, can you see how air along the equator will move faster than air 30 degrees north due to unequal distances along latitudes? Now, let's add west to east rotation. Isolating a single stream of air and applying the Coriolis effect, we can combine all of these points to show that, as the Earth rotates, the trade winds from the north move along a curved path, but the intended path is still technically a straight path. This Coriolis phenomenon requires a ball-shaped Earth, because you need it to spin but at different speeds and only unequal distances, as on a ball, can achieve that. Thus, the Coriolis effect and its impact on prevailing winds is an easy way to prove that the Earth is spinning along its axis and is ball-shaped, with the equator representing the greatest length. Otherwise, why would the prevailing winds follow a curved path? It must be due to a globe Earth that spins. On a flat, non-spinning Earth, however, there are a few issues. To start, why does the equator have faster moving air than 30 degrees south? Why you can argue that 30 degrees north on a flat Earth model is a shorter distance than the equator, allowing for a curved wind path that doesn't require a globe Earth that rotates? How do you explain 30 degrees south? This is a much greater distance than the equator and should therefore travel even faster. Does it make sense to say that the equator is moving faster than 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south due to its greater distance when it's objectively not true? But remember, the flat Earth community doesn't believe the Earth rotates. With that in mind, this is how these prevailing winds, moving from low to high pressure systems, should behave in a flat Earth that doesn't rotate. Remember, the only reason prevailing winds curve is due to the Earth's spin. Without the rotation of the Earth, even on a globe, the prevailing woods would follow a straight path. But in reality, this is how the wind belts would actually act when superimposed onto a flat Earth model. In order for these patterns to exist on a flat Earth model, two things would need to happen. First, this equator line would need to be the greatest distance. Second, you would need a way to explain why the equator line has air that moves faster than the smaller 30 degrees north latitude and the larger 30 degrees south latitude in such a way that can be practically demonstrated and observed. But by eliminating the globe shape of a spinning Earth in favor of a flat disc-shaped one that is fixed, you create significant problems that I can't see a possible solution for. Is there any way for the prevailing winds to exist on an Earth that is flat that doesn't rotate? None that I can see. Now, what I am arguing is that these wind belts, commonly known as prevailing winds, is a very strong piece of evidence that the Earth must be a globe shape and rotate along its axis. Since the existence of prevailing winds on a flat Earth model with belts of wind moving at different speeds in predictable directions is highly improbable. Therefore, using the Coriolis effect, we can conclude that global wind patterns do not fit into a flat Earth system, but rather demand a rotating globe-shaped Earth. And with that, we can tally the scores. Globe Earth 4, Flat Earth 0. Thank you for watching.
Please leave a comment with your thoughts, hit like, share the video and subscribe for more content and to support the channel.